Today I'm going to be showing you how to change an axle U-joint without a vise. Now a lot of you guys um, don't have access to a vise, they don't have a garage, and uh, you know, they, they want to know ways how I change them, and believe it or not this is how I change them. I don't have a vise, I don't have a table, but I don't have a vise, never really run across one yet. Um, there's several different ways you can do this. I'm just going to show you the easiest instead of getting a socket and pounding on your U-joints. This is the way I do it. You will bend the ring on this, but you can always pound it back out. It's not really that important. You really don't want to be pounding on these ears. You want to be pounding right in here. Okay? A lot of people, when they use a socket, they'll be pounding on it and you know bevel the ears out. Then it has a problem for the U-joint to come out the other side. All you're going to need is a hammer and two hard, sur two hard surfaces. Um, you can use two cinder blocks. I've done this on the trail with cinder blocks. I wouldn't necessarily say the trail. Um, you can do it on the trail. I've done this in my yard with two cinder blocks before I come up with this idea. But you're going to need two hard surfaces. Not really a table, but uh, like maybe two anvils or two pieces of metal of some sort or something. You'll see. So I'm going to go ahead and take this huge one out. So the reason why I'm doing it here, the camera would stop shaking. The reason why I'm doing it here, just to show you, you don't need perfect surface you don't need all this fancy stuff to change a u-joint um, I like to use two brake drums before you can take your axe right you got to go ahead and take these stupid C clips off this could this could take a while to get off this took me probably 15 to 20 minutes to stay here and beat these off thought I'd go ahead and skip the step pretty self-explanatory sometimes I just get rusted so let's go ahead and beat the u-joint out of this thing As you can see, I bent it here a little bit, but like I said, it's no big deal. You can bend it back up if you want. If you're like a um, some kind of a, uh, perfect mechanic or you want to do like everything perfect, uh, this video is probably not for you. This is for backyard mechanics like myself that don't have tons of money, and this will get you by. I've not had a problem with this. I've been doing this for years, so I thought I'd go ahead and throw that out there. One cap. Second cap. And you should be able to just go ahead and take your outer stub off. Pretty self-explanatory. Then this is where all this stuff comes in handy when you need this to go in between. See, it actually holds this. Um, like I said, I recommend beating back here and not up here because if you're beating on this with a socket, you have the risk of damaging the edge of this. I've seen people do it on the trail and uh, they couldn't get the U-joint cap back in. So that's why I like doing it this way. This takes some practice. Just kind of want to hold it up to like the back. I don't recommend sticking it between your legs, but I'm working with some limited space here. Then, you just go ahead and uh, pop your U-joint out. That's how you take it out. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to go ahead and put this old U-joint back in. Put it back in and you just do the reverse of what you've pretty much done. You just want to stick it in here. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for putting an old U-joint back in the axle, but like I said, why would I go buy more U-joints? I, I know what you guys are going to say, like, well, it's just an extra one for the bunch. I have seven driver side axles. I have no plan of going through all of them anytime soon. And I have six passenger side. So when it comes to the time, I probably won't even be using this one. I'm going to get updated axles for the Jeep. So that's why I'm just kind of putting an old U joint back in this. But now, you have needle bearings in here. 
These ones didn't fall out like the other ones, but you want to be careful when you go to put this back on. What I like to do is actually kind of get it centered like this, then go ahead and put your U joint, the whole U joint itself, down in there. Kind of give it a couple taps. And it kind of straightens it right back out. Then, same way with this side. That's okay to hit on these when you're putting it back in, but you know, you're just pounding your U joint back in. And it's the same way for for putting this back on. Like I said, you can take a pair of pliers, bend this back out if you have to. So you wanna go ahead and put your plastic piece back on and don't forget to put your moon clips back on your U-joint caps. That's what holds it in the axle. It's pretty self-explanatory. Like I said, it's not like really a professional way to do it. This is just something you can do, you know, in your back backyard or out on the trail even. As long as you find two hard surfaces. Now, I know a lot of people that take them out with the, uh, with the, uh, with sockets. They pound on the U-joint itself. And they pound for hours. I don't know what it is, but it's something to do with pounding on the piece itself. The stub shaft or the other part. It just moves the u-joint right out it's just something to do with the vibration it don't matter i mean the, the rusty ones are a little bit hard I actually had one that come from virginia a jeep and it was so rusted out that we backed it down in my old place that i used to live and all the brackets busted off the rear end and the front end that's how rusted this thing was right well, i took the axles out of it and they're like well you'll never get the u-joint out or rusted in there now the c-clips or the moon clips it took me a while. It took me, I'd say a half hour to get them out. That's how rusted it was. But when it comes to pounding the U-joints out, it was like butter. Probably like, well, I can go to the shop and have them do it. I mean, this lighting's horrible in here. It makes the camera look funny. But you're probably like, well, I can go to a shop and have them do it. It will only cost me a little bit of money, the U-joint, and then the press it in and this. Added it up for around, you know, my area. $20, actually $21 for the U-joint. That's a greasable U-joint. $20 to have them press it in. And where the shop is, I'd have to go get gas if I'm taking my Jeep, which that's twenty dollars. So right there is sixty bucks. And if I do this in my backyard this way, I only got twenty some dollars and uh, you know, in a U joint. Me just a little bit of labor time. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's just like a little quick tip. I do have some good stuff coming from the Jeep. I know I kind of steered away from it a little bit, but I've been super busy with work. I've been super busy with everything everything's like crazy it was 60 degrees three days ago down here almost eight or almost 75 degrees okay i'm out here in a t-shirt wake up the next day we're getting a windstorm it's flooding and now it's snowing it's it's 26 degrees out right now in this building the wind is the most chilling thing right now and, and while i'm in this building you know it's not as bad and by the way everybody keeps asking me where i got my push bar it's actually an s10 i got it from a junkyard i just welded tabs drilled holes in it and welded it to the uh onto my bumper but um, I want to kind of keep that stock look but still run a winch everybody gets off-road bumpers every time I go to a Jeep meet every time I see a YouTube video everybody has an off-road bumper so I'm gonna go ahead and try this bare bones or stock bare bones or whatever it's called backbones backbones not bare bones I don't even know what I'm talking about but I'm gonna go ahead and try that out um, that should be coming here pretty soon I got another installment video on a oil catch can and I'll explain why I'm putting that on a Jeep you know People are like, well, it's for turbid vehicles. Go ahead and check out all my social media because if you ain't following me on my social media, you know what I'm doing. You see things. I have a thing called Jeep of the Week. But anyway, I'm Cherokee Ronnie, and stay dirty, my friends.